all right so now we have shown that we can as well um, find our beta yet one from our knowledge of the relationship between or of the covariance of x and y relative to the variance of x now the same knowledge can be used to help us see how this particular relationship we have here can be written in terms of the correlation remembering from yesterday that we showed that our correlation coefficient is just the covariance of x and y divided by the product of the two standard deviations so we can rewrite that and say well an alternative way of finding our beta yield one is to say covariance of x and y over now what we know is that variance of x is actually standard deviation of x squared which can be written as standard deviation of x times standard deviation of x so i want to write this as standard deviation of x by standard deviation of x then the question to think about is how do i introduce standard deviation of y to the denominator to arrive at correlation I now have to multiply this expression here by 1. And this one, I'll think it in terms of, I'll think of it in terms of standard deviation of y over standard deviation of y. This number here is 1. Okay, so I haven't changed anything. I only multiplied by 1. Now, we can then manipulate, manipulate this relationship and it becomes covariance of x, y um, over s, d, x. Now, because this and that and that are not like each other, I can just rearrange them in terms of our right. I can start by writing that s, d, y, and I still have my s, d, y there. So one of the SDXs has to come this side, SDX. So I haven't changed anything. I, I simply reordered them in terms of which one do I write first. The value that I get doesn't change. Okay, so now you can see that this part here is your correlation, right? So then it means this is correlation of x y times standard deviation of y over standard deviation of x this is another way of finding my beta yet one now put differently then it means we can or not put differently but rather by way of conclusion we can say that there are three ways of getting beta yet one okay and this range from our beta yet one being equal to the sum of y minus y bar times x over the sum of x minus x bar times x so which can be rewritten just as sum of y minus y bar x minus x bar over sum of x minus x bar squared so so that's method one that's method one then method two is to manipulate this because Implicit in this formulation is the idea of variance and covariance. So beta yet 1 is actually equal to the covariance of x and y over the variance of x. And the method that 
can also give us equally the same answer. Is this one, which is your correlation of x, y, and standard deviation of y over standard deviation of x. Now, these are three alternative ways of finding the standard deviation, uh, of finding the, 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 the estimate of the slope parameter. Now, and these are called estimators. These, these formula are called estimators. They help us find an estimate of beta yet one. Now, in an exam situation or a test situation, I can give you any of this information. Your job is to assess the type of information presented in the question. Then using that information and the formula booklet that you are given, there will be a formula booklet as well, which has all these, uh, these formulas. Uh, and the, the formula booklet you are given, then you look at which of the formulas of the formula has the information provided in the question, or the information provided in the question is aligned to which one of these formula, and then you just use the relevant formula, you get your answer. It will be as simple as that. Um, so now what I want us to do is to work through regression analysis using the wage education example we had uh, in our previous discussions. Um, I want us to illustrate these three methods. Once we are done with that, then we can uh, go home and have coffee. I will stop here. What matters most is for you to master this. Look, it's easier for me to do this, not because I'm always teaching econometrics. This is my first time to teach this stuff. But when I did undergrad in our days, we had to derive these. We didn't work with formula booklets like you people. We actually had to know how to get these things. So in other words, the intuition has to be there. It can just be no using a formula booklet and crunching numbers and so forth. Understand the theory behind what you are using. How is it that it is like this? That it helps you to play around information. If the examiner manipulates something, you should be able to get the same answer by using your intuitive knowledge of econometrics. So let me stop here and uh, use an example to illustrate what we want to illustrate.